the first shot of the movie is this hand just sticking up through the rubble of a collapsed cliff, right? It's a bloody hand. And this alien vulture lands and starts nibbling on the fingers of this dead hand. And then you hear Riddick intoning. He says, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times I've been crossed off a list and left for dead, right? I guess when it first happens the day you were born, you're going to lose count. So this, this ain't nothing new. And then just wham, he grabs the vulture by the neck and strangles it. Just this hand, right? So that kind of announces right there that this is a guy who's been left for dead and he's having none of it, yeah? And that the story quickly becomes about a guy who's digging his way out of this premature grave, battling whatever hostile elements this world has to offer, and then finding a way off planet. The Riddick universe is so far afield, so far stretched, there is no true police force. So they filled in with these paramilitary types, these mercenaries, right? Who then have to go and corral the uh, various escaped convicts of the world. And there's none more famous in the Riddick universe than Riddick, right? And there is nobody with a greater bounty on his head than Riddick. So he is the prize of prizes. And so that's why we have this endless stream of mercenaries on this guy's tail. For lack of a better word, nobody, nobody voices what, they, what they're called. They're just, the, the creatures are what the creatures are. But we call them internally, we just call them mud demons. And uh, Riddick encounters these very early in the story, and they come in small sizes, they come in medium sizes, they come in big sizes. And these are creatures that lie dormant in the ground, waiting for the next uh, wet season to come on this planet. And once the real wet season comes, you know, that's when they're going to rise up and create all kinds of chaos for our characters, you know, unbeknownst to them at the beginning, the mercenaries anyway, unbeknownst to the mercenaries at the beginning of the movie. I hope the audience thinks it is a worthy follow-up to the first two movies. Um, you know, we didn't make this one through a studio. We made this independently, right? And that means basically that I just wrote the script for the movie that I wanted to see next, right? And then strangely, I went out and shot it, right? So hopefully that resulted in something that is, you know, dark and visceral and eye-grabbing and hopefully, if I did my job right, exciting.